all these elements go into each. Uh, so just just a, a it, it is a, just a, I'm just sharing for those uh, who may have a uh, it may be a new for some, but for many I think it's just a reminding. So how interesting it is to find from when you look at from a different perspective. That is all I want to share. That is shame. whether this is true or not true. And when this happens, then you can do this kind of drawing the correlation, trying to interpret and all that. That all you can do it yourself. I am purposely not doing it for you. Because it is better that you do it yourself because you better know what you have been you know, understanding and assuming about it. So that sorting out, I generally leave it uh, for you. Some of the things I have evaluated in between, particularly in the context of the modern civilization, okay, of the modernity. Okay. I have done this because this modernity, this modern civilization has, is one of the prominent uh, <coughs> civilization today and which is dominating all over the world. Okay. And one of the simplest things that can be you know, uh, understood about it is that this physical facility is the upper limit of this whole civilization <coughs> and which is not enough for anybody. So, uh, except for that, I you know, leave uh, it, you know, this right proposal with you to verify it yourself. And once you have verified, then to, you know, see all that you have been assuming or understanding till now, okay, on the basis of this, that you do it yourself. So, I am very purposely you know, <coughs> using it for you to do it yourself rather than I doing it for you. You will be able to do this sorting out better. <coughs> so that if I try doing this, evaluating this of yours, okay, it may be quite, you know, <coughs> troublesome for many people. So I better leave it with, you know, for you to do it for yourself. That will be better. Okay. So the other four things which I have written here, in terms of the inheritance, in terms of the conformance to the conduct. Okay. If you look at the, you know, physical order, as long as its constitution remains the same, okay, its conduct remains the same. So as long as the constitution of the iron metal remains the same, right, the conduct of the iron will remain the same. If it is getting converted into rust, that means its constitution is changing. Therefore, its conduct also changes. Similarly, if you change the constitution of iron into <coughs> steel, right, the conduct of the steel is very different from the conduct of the iron. Okay. What has been done is some small number of, very small, insignificant <coughs> number of atoms of nickel and cobalt is put into this iron. Okay. As a result, the constitution has changed. As a result, the whole conduct of the steel 
is changed from iron to steel. Like one will get rusted, <coughs> the steel will not get rusted. So some change in the constitution leads to the change in the conduct. As long as the constitution remains the same, the conduct will remain the same. So this conformance to the conduct is based on the constitution. <coughs> when it comes to the pranic order, the conduct is based on the seat. So as long as you preserve the seat, right, the conduct of that tree will be preserved. If you want to change the conduct of the tree, you have to modify the seat. And that is being done, that is what is being done, right? So-called hybrid seed and things like that. You are modifying the seed and therefore the conduct of the plant will change. Similarly, the conduct of the animals and birds, okay, this animal order, is ensured by way of breed. So the cow has a particular breed, okay, so it will have a definite conduct. The lion has a different breed, so it will have a definite conduct, no different conduct. But when it comes to human being, the conduct of human being is decided by seed, by breed, or by education and sanskar. Education and sanskar. <coughs> that is the difference. Right? If you look at the body, okay, it is decided by the body of the mother and father, right? the characteristic of the body. But when it comes to the self, it is decided by the education and sanskar, okay, which you are passing on from one generation to the other generation, through parents, through teachers, through all this you know, environment in the society. So the conduct of human being is decided by the education and sanskar. So uh, when you say inheritance, Conformance. So you are basically talking about conduct. Yeah, we are talking about how the conduct is transferred from one generation to other generation. <coughs> so in case of the plant, it is transmitted through seed. In case of animal, it is transmitted through the breed. But in case of human being, it is transmitted through the education and sanskar. So if you are not giving the right kind of education and sanskar, then you get into trouble. Right? Even if the parents are very scholarly people and very well-meaning people, right? If that education and sanskar is not transmitted to the child and some other sanskar is given, education and sanskar is given, right? Then his conduct will be different. <coughs> and this is what is happening to the most traditional societies, right? Their, you know, previous beliefs and, you know, practices were different. Now these children are exposed to the moral education, which is causing another set of beliefs, right? another set of preconditionings. Okay? So their conduct is not conforming to the conduct of their parents and the old generation. So if you want them to behave with, you know, as human beings, then you have to give them human education and sanskar. Here I was looking at uh, the uh, this right extreme uh, right uh, inheritance uh, in uh, terms of uh, physical order, then characteristic existence, and then constitution. Okay, uh, I understood. Then pranic order, seed. Okay, I understood. If you sow an apple seed, you will have an apple. If you sow orange, then you have an orange. That's fine. For animal, uh, it says breed. I don't know whether it should be self, I, or a breed. This is one question. And then this is, I'm getting confused. Then second is human beings, you are saying education and sanskar. Again, here I am thinking of a, why not a self or a I. Because when a child is born, he doesn't have a sanskar or education. But then he has been given education and then only that he gets that. But I is separate from the education because uh, education cannot bring the human beings. Uh, education <coughs> is as a part of a training, you know, that we give him. 
So I thought that in spite of education, maybe uh, I or self, uh, so this is what I'm thinking, maybe I'm not clear. Education and saskar will take place in the self. As far as the body is concerned, it will go by breed. Okay. The, so the constitution of the body, the appearance and the color and all this of the body, they depend on the, you know, body of the father and the mother. So in that sense, you know, it goes by breed. Okay. But the self okay, goes by education and sanskar which is given to it. Okay. And also some sanskar which it has, you know, with it, okay, <coughs> carrying it from the previous association with the body. So, depending on what kind of education and sanskar you are giving, okay, and what kind of sanskar it has to begin with, its conduct will be decided. So we saw this that the conduct, you know, or the recognition and fulfillment of the body is definite in everyone, right? But the recognition and fulfillment in the self will depend upon the knowing and assuming, or assuming without knowing. So education and sanskar will either you know, provide you that assuming or knowing and assuming. Okay. So with that, okay. You, your conduct will be decided. No, so, so I'm getting confused with the word written there as an inheritance and conformance. And then the, when you explain, you are explaining in terms of the conduct. So I think that is one. <coughs> because my thinking was when you mentioned inheritance or conformance, the last one, is something to do with the, uh, uh, something to do with the, when a human being is born, in another life, then I thought it's uh, when you say the seed up there, then down should be the eye. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> I mean, see. Yeah, but sanskar and education eye is only, uh, you know, once you give them the reading body. But this, but this eye is a transfer when you die and take, taking bath. Yeah, so when you are associating with a new body, yes. it's not that you don't have any sanskar left. Education. So you have carried lot of sanskar okay, from your previous association with the body. So you may you know, have this education before leading to sanskar. So now you are carrying that sanskar with you. Baksha. We call it Baksha. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's like a, Baksha means uh, if I explain it to the, from the computer point of view, that in computer we have a memory, you know, hard disk. So if you have a lot of information in that computer, so that's memory. So maybe then, then, then I have a education and sanskar, so that memory passed down to the next life. So then, so we call that as Baksha. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, if you look at this <coughs> sanskar, we can write down two equations. So, I will write down these two equations for you. Thank you. One is sanskar is collection of is summation of all the desire, thoughts, expectations. We have, we have accumulated, right? That is correct. Confirm. So, this is the definition of sanskar. And if you want to update this sanskar, okay, then the other equation would be that sanskar at time t plus the environment that you get at time t plus your self-study or self-exploration that you do at time t will lead to your sanskar at t plus 1.
So these are the two equations about some stuff. So for example, when we started this workshop, we had some sanskar. Some collection of desire, thoughts and expectations research. Then we are providing an environment of self-exploration. Then you are doing a self-exploration. As a result, right? Your sanskar is getting updated. So these are the two equations about sanskar. Okay, anyway we'll come back, you know, keep coming back to this, because after all this self and, you know, with its education and sanskar, you know, it's creating, you know, problem or creating the solution. So, it's, it's <coughs> okay, let me uh, sum this up, you know, conclude this you know, on the basis of what we have studied and make some observation and then we can you know, open it to question. <laughs> so if you look at all this, the physical order, the pranic order and the animal order, you don't need to do anything for them. I mean, you don't need to kind of modify them <coughs> they all have definite conduct, right? That is what we said the very first day, right? This physical order, the pranic order and the animal order. They all have definite, definite conduct or you need to do something for them. They have definite conduct, right? Yes. And you don't need to do anything, you know, to modify their conduct. When you look at the human being, <coughs> the problem is only with the human being. So all this you see, okay? What is the problem with human being? <coughs> the problem is that the human being has a will to live with continuous happiness, right? But it is not living with continuous happiness. That is the problem, right? Now what do I need to do to ensure this continuity of happiness? Right understanding and right feeling. For that I need to have the right understanding. So this is something that is required to be done for human beings. Right? Not for animals. You don't need to have this workshop for animals, right? <laughs> not for trees and plants. Not for the metals and soil, right? We need this to be done in human being, right? Right understanding then right understanding and right feeling, then living, to living with continuity of happiness. Right? So you can see this. This is what I have to do for human being. This is all to be done. Right? In order to do this, what is required? Is this education in sanskar, right? So you can see, if I provide the right education in sanskar to human being, the human education in sanskar to human being, then this will result into this. Right? So right education in sanskar or human education in sanskar will result into right understanding, which will result into right understanding and right feeling, which will result into living with continuous happiness. And if one is living with continuous happiness, he can provide this education and sanskar, right education and sanskar to the next generation, right? So you can see what essentially we need to do and which is of the paramount importance is this. Right? Other than human being, all of them are in order. 
Okay. We have to work with the human being. And what are we doing? We are not working with human being. We think this is fine. <laughs> we are trying to modify the breed of the cows. <laughs> the seed of the plants, right? And the constitution of this, you know, physical order. And where is the problem? The problem is here. So we have to seek the solution here. Right? Instead we are trying to seek the solution here. So you are working with the rest of the nature, trying to modify it. Right? You think that these rivers are flowing like that, you know, no use. Okay? So put a bun there, you know, dam there, divert it, you know, to Delhi. <laughs> Things like that. Okay? Then you think that seeds are not proper, they are not in giving enough yield. Okay? So you are trying to modify the seed. And the breeds are also not good. So you are modifying the breed. And you are not doing what you <coughs> need to do. This is what we need to do as human beings. This is the only unit in nature which does not exhibit a definite conduct. Okay, and that is why there is a problem you know, with the human being. The rest of them are showing different conduct. So what we need to do is to essentially work for, you know, work with human beings, right? And what do we do for them? Through right education and sanskar, ensure right understanding, right understanding, <coughs> right feeling, and living with continuity of happiness, right? That is all that is required to be done. And therefore the most fundamental thing for human being to do is to provide the right education and sanskar. Once this is done, then the cycle will be set. <coughs> and that will become a human tradition. Right? If this is done and we have the right understanding and right feeling, then we can go back and start identifying our relationship with each one of them and decide what we have to do with them. So when we have the right understanding and right feeling, then we can go back and see that with physical order, we must maintain their existence. We must maintain their constitution. Right? For example, with earth, I must be able to preserve the constitution of the earth. If I start if I start playing with the constitution of earth, right, there may be a lot of problems. For example, we have dug out so much of coal, right? From the earth. The constitution has changed. Right? Therefore, the heat capacity of the earth has gone down. Then they have burned this coal, which has created excessive heat. Right? Now, this put together, there is global warming. Right? On the one hand, lot of heat is generated. On the other hand, the heat capacity has been reduced. Right? So, there is lot of variation in the temperature now. Where is to be a variation between 10 degree and 30 degree? Now there is a variation between 0 degree and 50 degree. So what we have done? We have changed the constitution of the earth and it is creating problems. Then when we are working with the pranic order, we will ensure the you know, seed, preserving the seed, maintaining the continuity of the seed. Okay. This is another problem. Right? Traditionally, we have all a lot of seed suiting to that place, right? To that soil, you know, the environment, the climate. Now we have come with all kind of seeds, okay, which are not suitable for the climate, for the soil, you know, and all that. So you have to have a whole lot of, you know, insecticides and pesticides, and you know, so so much so that you convert the crop into poison. <laughs> Similarly, the breed will preserve the breed of the animals, right? Of the birds. Okay. So this is what we need to do with them, and this is what we need to do with ourselves. And then you have to start working. You start with yourself, or with this.
you have to start with yourself, right? And there you have to start with the right education and sanskar. And that is what we have been telling for last six days, right? <laughs> <laughs> Same in story repeated every day, right? Every session. And we have been uh, we have been uh, doing uprooting of the marawanas, you know, thinking that uh, something is wrong with that marawana. <laughs> 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 Yeah, many such things. You come up with big, big projects. You know, like in India, we have a big project called Gandhi. You know, what is that? Golden, golden triangle or something. Golden quadrilateral. Yes, golden quadrilateral. So, what we are thinking that these rivers are flowing just like that, going west. So all the rivers must be connected, right? And they must all be taken to Delhi and Bombay and things like that. Because if it is not going to Delhi, it's the west. <laughs> and this is how, you know, lot of you and cry is in, uh, in favor of it and against it and so on. But we don't talk about human beings. We don't see what human, you know, we have to do with human beings. And all this problem is created by human beings. <laughs> so that is where we have to work, right? And that is where we are trying to work. So at cynical levels, we can it can be understood as you can create a devil out of human beings, or make a devil into human beings, God into devil, devil into God, and in the hand of uh, wrongful or state. Any citizen can be programmed to do anything. Yeah, that's what we are doing. <laughs> that's exactly what we are doing. Right? We are making, you know, people more anarchy and deprived by giving this kind of education. So the devil can be made out of the human being. The God can be made out of human beings, right? And it is an issue of giving education in sanskar. If you give a right, you know, education in sanskar, human education in sanskar, right? Then you will be able to have human beings living with definite conduct, right? Living in harmony within themselves and living in harmony with everybody else. On the other hand, if you give an inhuman education in sanskar, right? Then you will have human beings with <coughs> human connect. Right? You will become problem for themselves and problem for others. So we live in contradiction within and we create contradiction outside. And that is what is happening. Good. So now you can see, as far as the nature is concerned, okay, these four orders in nature are in harmony. They are related to each other in a mutually fulfilling manner. Three of them are already mutually fulfilling for each other. They are also mutually fulfilling for human being. Human being also has a natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment with the rest of them. Right? In order to ensure this mutual fulfillment, all that is required is the right understanding and right feeling. And for that what is required is the right education and sanskar. If only we have this, Right? We can also ensure the mutual fulfillment with rest of nature. So the question which I had raised in the last session, that we all want to live in harmony at the level of individual, at the level of family, at the level of society. But what about the nature? Is it such that we can live in harmony or is it contrary to it? So if you do the study of the nature, it turns out that nature is already in harmony. All the units are mutually fulfilling, you know, they are related to each other and related to each other in a mutually fulfilling manner. What we need to do as human beings is to understand this harmony, right? Understand this relationship of mutual fulfillment and <coughs> ensure that mutual fulfillment. If only we do that, the rest of it is already in order. So you can see that the nature is already in harmony. The way it is, you know, there, it is already in harmony, it is already in a relationship of mutual fulfillment. 
and therefore it is possible for us to be in harmony right? at the level of society, in harmony at the level of family and at the level of individual. So nature is not the problem. We are the problem. And we have become the problem because of lack of rightness. 